uh, is Brian Benstock of Paragon Honda and his, his close advisor, David Spizak, the managing partner of Hague Partners. Um, we're really going to check in again and figure out the boots on the ground. What are things looking like um, in the last State of the Union a month ago? Brian very transparently shared the fact that um, he had COVID-19 and he has fully recovered from that. You can just see that in his social posts and the, the momentum that he's hard charging as usual. And uh, so it's going to be great to hear an update from him and say like, hey, where's the white space? Where should we be looking? Where should we be paying attention? Um, so Brian, David, welcome back to the show. Um, thanks for spending some time with us this morning. Good to be with you, Paul. Paul, it's great to be here. All right, everybody's, well, Brian's smiling. David's, David's thinking, he's very serious. Everybody's smiling, all right, just had to do it. Um, gentlemen, I respect both of you very, very much. Um, I don't wanna put um, an agenda onto this session because I know that you have the insights. So um, I wanna flip it right to you, Brian, and say, what do you think we should be talking about? What should be at the top of the list in conversation? Actually, before that, can you just give us a little check-in? How are things going at Paragon? How are things going with you? You know, they're, they're good, they're great, and they're horrible all at the same time. You know, I don't know how to measure progress. Um, we're going to finish somewhere between, you know, about 250 retail deliveries at the dealership. 100% um, of those retail deliveries were online transactions, so I'm, I'm proud of that. We went from about 8% of our transactions being online to 100% of the transactions being online. Um, and I think that that represents good pro uh, progress. Uh, the num that being said, the number is not where we want it to be. Uh, and so, you know, even though there's a lot of difficult things going on in, in the world right now, it's time for me to shift focus and attention to uh, the recovery, uh, to what can we do to rebuild uh, the business, what can we do uh, to look for the opportunities that are there while being respectful to what's going on in our immediate environment. Um, can you give us a little feel for what what it like like life at Paragon is like right now? Like, what does it look like in the organization, in the service department, um, on deliveries? If you could just give us a feel for that. So, so the service business is pretty good. You know, we've had that pickup and delivery we've been doing for about three years now, and thank yeah. God for that. And, and, and so I would say now fully 80% of our customer pickup and deliveries are being done uh, through RedCap through our pickup delivery service. And, and that, that has really uh, saved us. Our RO count went from 40 a day to 50 a day to 60 a day to 70 a day, and it's now over 100 ROs a day. And, and considering that we don't have a waiting room because we've closed the customer waiting room, that, that's right. fantastic uh, for us. The, the metrics are starting to flow in, and we're seeing uh, a return to somewhat of uh, a normal flow of business. We brought 100% of the technicians back, everybody that wanted to work, uh, 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 to come back to work. Uh, in the environment, we've, uh, we've got, um, I think, a clinical uh, approach to this. Our service readers are in lab coats and dressed in sports jackets and, and, and dress slacks uh, with, of course, the gloves and taking the proper precautions to let the customers know visually, hey, this is a different experience. This is going to be a clean, clinical experience when we check in your car. And we, again, if we're, we're spraying all over cars prior to putting the seat coverings on the car to protect both the customers and the, the uh, technicians and, and, and the associates. So that, that's pretty exciting. I've got a showroom outside that's completely empty. I have no salespeople in the showroom. I have no managers in the showroom. Um, and it's really ominous to see you know, our 747 empty, but the really great thing is behind the scenes, We've got an at-home BDC that's working full time, you know, and, and they're, you know, getting the inbound calls, tossing it to a salesperson, salesperson's completing the transaction and doing the delivery. And you know, yesterday we, we saw 15 deliveries without a customer coming to the showroom, so it's it's, it's pretty uh, exciting, uh, and, and we're Tell starting to see that in all the divisions. Uh, David, we're going to get to you in just a second. Um, Brian, tell me the types of people that are going through the online process. And, and buying a car in this time, especially in New York City, obviously, where the situation has been escalated beyond anywhere else in the country. Who are the types yeah. of people that are, are coming online and actually going through with the transaction? Well, mostly men and women, uh, um, and many are tall and many are short, and some are young and some are old. Uh, you know, and, and we, we've got a cross section of everybody doing business online, and that's that is the the great thing. You know, there there is no uh, particular typeset uh, of customers. They're, they're, you know, God bless them. We've got a, a very good base, and we've got a pretty uh, high uh, 
lease retention rate at the dealership. And so we've got a lot of customers that are returning to market. You know, think back three years ago. How many cars did we sell in April three years ago? It was north of uh, a thousand new and used cars, and many of those leases are coming due. So customers uh, are not forced, but they're back in the market. And those that are able to transact are transacting, and and frankly, we've shown them the new way to transact. And I don't think there's any going back. In fact, I think uh, the toothpaste is out of the tube, and you're not going to be able to put it back for a certain portion of the business. Very good. That that's. I was wondering where you're going. Some are men and some are women. I'm like, where's he going with this? <laughs> fun, funny, funny. Uh, David, so you, you're very familiar with what's going on with Paragon. Also very familiar with what's going on um, in a lot of dealers across the country. Uh, w what's going through your head? What, what uh, type of insight do you have working so closely with Brian and uh, with other dealers? Well, you know, it's a good question, Paul. And uh, things are changing, as we all know. Literally, uh, feels like by the minute, by the day. Mm -hmm. Sure does. Uh, everything from PPP, where you get new rules, new regulations, new certification requirements, uh, you know, new documentation requirements to what's going on in the business and how people are having to adapt, literally on a daily basis. And not just with how they're dealing with clients, but think about it. They're also you got to learn how to how to deal with your associate in a whole new way. Right. How do you manage? How do you lead? How do you inspire? How do you motivate people when they're not in front of you, right? Uh, if you thought before that your sales managers for their main jobs was to keep an eye on everybody, keep an eye on the traffic, keep an eye on the salespeople, keep an eye on the BDC and the internet department, nobody's got an eye on anything right now. So it's interesting. The second thing that occurs to me though is we're kind of into the next stage, right? The first thing is everybody was kind of, we're all hit punch in the face that we never saw coming, right? Who would have imagined if I would have said eight weeks ago, you know, as I'm sitting in New York City, having dinner with a bunch of industry folks, including Brian, who, if I would have said eight weeks from now, the country's gonna be closed down. The airlines are gonna be off 95%. Restaurants will be closed down. 95% of the country will be stuck at home. Nobody would have believed it. So Not the at first all. reaction, you know, just this punch in the face, and what do I do now? You know, immediately. And they're thinking, what do I do until the shelter in place orders are lifted? Now we're in the next stage because now we're understanding that it's highly likely that this is not like a hurricane that came through that we need five or six weeks to put up new glass in the showroom and get the stores back open. Right. This is new normal. This is how you need to compete. This is how you have to now learn to succeed. Completely different situation. It's like you're running a race. You can see the ribbon in front of you. And as soon as you get within 100 yards, they pull the ribbon back another yep. lap. And they pull the ribbon back another lap. So I think that it's really uh, put people in a position to where they are forced. And this is not a bad thing, everybody. This is a good thing. You are forced. And this is regardless of whether you are a dealer, whether you're a sales associate, a fixed op manager or a solution provider to dealers, you are now forced to put your face into your business and really re-examine, really focus on it in a way you probably have never been engaged before. Even for those who are highly engaged, they're now more engaged. Second thing is you've got to figure out how to reinvent yourself because this is the new normal. This is not a blip, this is the new normal. You, David, you're talking about Alvin Toffler's uh, future shock, right? Where we have to learn, uh, unlearn, and then relearn. And that's really what we need to do. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and the third thing, you know, one of the things you actually Brian had shared with me was a great video. If everybody could look it up by the great Jim Collins, who wrote the book Good to Great. He's also an, a professor at Stanford, where he's talking about Admiral Stockdale when Admiral Stockdale was a prisoner of war. And one of the things that he brought up in there was oftentimes, you know, there's no there's no shortage of optimism. We are an industry full of irrational optimism, optimism based on nothing, right? Which is kind of awesome a lot of times, but this is not the time for irrational optimism. What Admiral Stockdale, when he was asked, how did you survive? And what was the difference between you and other people? Oddly enough, he said that the optimists are the ones that struggle. The optimists are the ones who perished. 
because the optimist always thought tomorrow, next week, next week, next month, hey, when they open up shelter in place, everything's going to go back to normal, and then they get disappointed. And then they think, wow, the month after is going to get back to normal, and then they're disappointed, right? And, and what he said is you have to confront the brutal reality. We as an industry must confront the brutal reality. So we're forced to look at our business in a different way. We are needing to reinvent. And then we really have to think about going forward. How are we going to restructure our business? It's, just, it's almost as if the slate's been wiped clean. How would you start the business now? If somebody asked you six months ago, hey, Brian, you know, if you had to do it all over again, knowing everything you know, as much success as you had, what would you do differently? Well, we're an industry that not too long ago, we had 21,000 dealerships employing 930,000 people. And, and we moved to being an industry after 2009 that dropped below 17,000 uh, dealerships employing 1.1 million people. We managed to increase our headcount by over 20% at the precise time frame when technology was supposed to make things better, more efficient, better uh -huh. client experience. So you're right? saying we, uh -huh. we paid for the technology. You're saying, for a you're saying we paid for the technology and we, we increased headcount. And, and that doesn't work. We added six to eight. Everybody, every dealership out there, you can relate to this. You, you now have six, eight, 10, 12 different third party software solutions. Your guys are logging into every day trying to keep up with every day. And now it's one more thing for them to do, and they have 20 to 25% more headcount to keep track of, right? David, well, I th I th oh, it's like the, the, the old saying that like, good times make for bad habits, right? Yeah. We just went through a really great time, right? So we got really bloated. We, and like, it's hard to tell someone that's clearing, you know, millions of dollars a year that they're doing anything wrong because you don't have to, right? And so like, I'm trying to take a cue from you because I am an irrational optimist. Um, but going through this, like you said, like people approach this as like a blizzard, like it's a storm. And there's a great organization called Praxis and they said, well, it's not a blizzard and it's actually not even, the next stage will be like winter, lasts for a few months and it's gone. It's actually not even a winter. This is a very short ice age where we're gonna have to like really lean in and say, this is gonna be extended, not a blizzard, not the winter, short ice age, let's treat it as such, like you said, from like treat it like Jeff Bezos, today's day one. What do we do with day one, with the market we have, with the resources we have, with the technology we have? Brian, what do you got? My mentor uh, taught me a long time ago that the seeds of failure are planted in the soil of success. And, mm. you know, I think that Love speaks that. to what David was talking about. We've got this irrational exuberance and we're adding headcount, adding headcount. And little by little, we're, we're undermining ourselves. And that those seeds of failure are planted in that fertile soil of success. But conversely, the seeds of success are planted in the soil of adversity. And I think this is a really great opportunity to reset the headcount of the dealership, to reevaluate what our needs are going forward. When I say it's a great opportunity, I'm not happy about what's going on. I, you know, we're, we're in the middle of this. I've been telling friends, this feels like we're in Ramadi or Fallujah. And, and people say, well, that's a little bit extreme. And I say, well, no, not actually. Uh, we're losing in, in, in the borough of Queens, in the city of New York, more people every day than, we're, than lives were lost in Ramadi at any point in time on a daily basis. Mm. I was speaking with a, a friend of mine who's a dealer in Canada, and uh, he was telling me, I believe it was in Manitoba, that they've lost three lives to COVID. And, and three lives is three lives too many. And they had about 300 people uh, that are in, uh, affected with the disease in, in that uh, province. Um, I, I, I said to him, we lost five hundred people yesterday in the city of New York. You know, so you know, thankfully that number is dropping. But you know, it, it speaks to the seriousness of this, uh, and it also speaks to you know just what you know each different area of the country is going through. We, we have many uh, associates across the country that are experiencing 15 to 25 percent reductions in business, and they're saying, "Oh my God, it's terrible." Um, my uh, one of my zone managers was telling me that in this district. Uh, his sales are down by 80 percent, 80 percent. So well, that's unlike anything we've seen. And so if, if sales are down by 80 percent, but we're only down by uh, 55 percent, uh, that's a, a win, I think. It doesn't feel like a win, but maybe that's a, a win. Um, when we looked at some of the metrics, 
there's a lot of people online right now shopping for automobiles in this market. We look at the Google Analytics, and in fact, our cost per click has gone from $7 a click down to $3 a click. So there's some real opportunities in there. It's like, you know, um, uh, if, if, if your cost per click is cut in half, then you can spend less money and get the same effectiveness that you did That's last right. year, spending twice the amount of money. And I think so many people have, you know, uh, contracted, right? Like David said, it was a body blow when this came, and everyone's huddled down and contracted. And, and now it's time to, okay, it's not, I'm still standing, and now look around and say, hey, you know, there, there are some things I can do, and there are some things we can do. Um, many of the manufacturers have pulled back their ad budget, and, and the Tier 2 uh, operators have pulled back their ad budget also. Uh, it's like 2012 all over again. You can buy Tier 1 ad words now for a price that you could never buy. Like if I wanted to buy the name Honda and get that dominance yeah. in the market, you, you, you know, dealers should look at that. You can actually buy a Tier 1 uh, term. And i got to tell you, it's not up or funnel anymore. Anybody that's searching yep. right now is ready. So High intent. Be, yeah, yeah, yeah I, think, I think so. I mean, of all the things I searched for when I was at home uh, with, with, with the virus, I, everything that I searched for I was interested in. There was no, hey, let me just look at a car that I'm never going to buy. Yeah. You look at a car right. I'm looking at for 90 days from now. Not really. I looked at things that I was interested in uh, purchasing. So I think, I think there's a lot of strong interest in the market. And I, I, I think uh, our team at Paragon is really going to go after it in, 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 in a big way. And in a safe we got a We've got a couple questions. Um, and just so you know, if you just checked in, if you want a question to be asked, just type it right into the comments thread and my team will aggregate them and put them on the screen in front of me. So um, let's see, um, let's see, this is a good one. Um, align with what you were saying, do you think manufacturers may now start marketing direct to consumers um, a little bit more effectively and efficiently as we come out of this? Do you think that you're gonna see a flow back to that like in a, in a very intense way once this ends? Can I, can I, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, say, I'll sure. say something on that and I'll flip it to Brian. Uh, so a couple things. Uh, the manufacturers are feeling the same thing we're feeling, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so what you're feeling at a dealership level, they're feeling, right? And the more money you have at stake, the more spurred you have, the bigger, the, the more this hurts. So, so they have no choice. Now, truth be told, they've been working on for years trying to figure out how to connect directly with clients, right? Mm -hmm. I believe that once they were validator, they, they saw validation through Tesla mm -hmm. that you can connect and sell cars directly, that they were at the same time, um, you know, irritated, bothered, and, you know, wanted to maybe legally go after Tesla, but also were, were very, uh, they're, they're very much admiring what Tesla accomplished. And I think since right. then they've been trying to do that. Now, there's two things I think it's important for us as dealers or people in the industry to keep in mind. And I think this is very important to point out at the outset. I've heard people, not just in the industry, outside the industry, you know, pointing fingers and blaming. We, we see it every night on CNN or Fox News. We hear about it all the time in the industry. But this is not the time to be blaming anybody, right? Nobody did this to you. Right, and the more That's time right. you waste going down that that avenue is is bad for your business. So let's talk about that from an OEM perspective. I've seen a lot of people uh, hammering OEMs for uh, what they're doing in terms of digital retailing, that their selection, their way of going about it isn't the right way. But at least it's something, right? It's at yep. least it's creating leads. At least it's creating interest. And and so it's incumbent on us as a dealer, right? to be handling customers the way we believe it needs to be done. And thank God, you get to pick your own digital retailing solution. And be very careful there. There's over 50 digital retailing solutions. Do not pick a solution that gives you the ability to piss off or disappoint a client in a whole new way, right? Yep. So you're used to disappoint at times or piss off clients uh, offline in the store. Now I'm seeing customers being disappointed or pissed off online, right? That's not healthy. Uh, <laughs> no. You've got to be very wise in, in what you're picking. Number two, you have to own it. Get behind it and get in the middle of it. Get dirty in terms of the execution of that online strategy from bringing people in to the dealership to what that experience feels like, right? It's really, really important. And so the OEMs, the one last thing I'll say, 
is that they've been, at least in trials, there's, I believe, 24 different manufacturers currently in trials for subscriptions. Well, guess what? Subscriptions, regardless of whether you, what you think of subscriptions, gives the OEM the ability, the opportunity to communicate directly and do business yep. directly with the client. Now, that could be good for the client in some respects, but we have to figure out how to coexist as an industry because when somebody does a subscription, what happens to F&I income? Which, by the way, is the most profitable part of our dealerships. There is no F&I income on a subscription. Mm -hmm. What happens to fixed ops? There is no fixed ops or, or a lower amount of fixed ops. So I think that we just have to learn how to coexist, how to get better relationships, and how to get in the foxhole together with the OEMs uh, to figure this out. We can't do it divided. Brian, I like that. I like that. You know, I, I, I think it's uh, something we've been saying for a long time, and I've been working with a great team at American Honda. Vicky Pomponi is just absolutely the best at the Honda. And we, we were creating uh, what we call the digital customer journey about three years ago. And it, it's amazing that the people that were slowing this down or really the impediment were a lot of the dealers. The dealers weren't looking for that digital solution. Or if they were looking for a digital solution, many dealers were looking for a digital solution that replicated what we're doing inside the store. And, and that won't right. I, I was quoted in an article, and I posted it, I think, this morning on LinkedIn, that was talking about dealers move to the digital future. And it was interesting. It's that. Favorable. A very favorable article, but I, I asked the, the readers of the article to look at the comments below. And the comments below were from customers who had recently taken uh, a digital journey at a dealership, and they found it was a lot of the same uh, bad techniques or tactics that dealers were doing in the store they were doing online. Like, if you want the price, you've got to buy it first, and then I'll give you the best price. If you want to do your monthly payment, you've got to buy it first, and then I'll give you your monthly payment. Uh, and, and that stuff's not going to cut it. And I think that's bad for yeah us as an industry, you know, that, that this is not a way to do business the same way as we're doing it in the store. Our online experience has to compete with Amazon. Our online experience has to compete with Apple. So how many hours a day is Apple open? 24 hours a day. How many hours a day is Amazon open? 24 hours a day. And how do you have your digital store uh, open only 10 hours or 12 hours a day? It's got to be open 24 hours a day. And so that's going to cause some staffing problems. Thank problems. Thank goodness. I've got a bunch of guys that are caffeine freaks, and leads are coming in at 1 o'clock in the morning, and Julian is there, and responding <laughs> to the leads. And Shout out happened? to Julian. Guess, but guess what's happened to his team? They're number one in the store. Because I believe it. Customers need. 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, he's sending me an email. Hey, I just closed the deal. Well, you know, that's great, right? I mean, and the, the customers got to have their mind blown if they're sitting at home. And they're on their mobile device, or they're on their, their, their desktop or their laptop, and they shoot a lead to the dealership. And a real person from our store, not from you know some faraway country. That's right. The lead That's right. And handles the lead effectively. And then, then Julian was, was, was going through this, and I don't sleep. And, and he's going through this, and he says, "I just arranged the insurance with the customer, and he loved it." Now, because that other giant is open, Psycho. Yep. Right. So if we're going to play and if we're going to compete, I'm not competing with the dealer across the street. I'm not competing with the dealer down the block. I'm not competing with the dealer in California. I'm competing with Amazon. I'm competing with Apple. And, and we've got a long way to go before we think that we can actually compete with them. We've got a long way to go. And I think our, our store has been on this for a number of years. We, Paragon, has a very long way to go. I can't rely you know, on what we've got happening with to, to, to represent. <laughs> Jul Julian, I know Julian. He he would definitely he's up for the challenge. Um, I was talking to a oh, dealer yeah. the other That's day good. who was. <laughs> I was talking to a dealer the other day who's buying cars off the curb at eleven midnight, right? Because if people are up and they submit it, they're actually ready to have a conversation. You ready. Move this you whole gotta life. Move this, you gotta move the speed at the speed of the customer, and it's not a soundtrack. That's not a nice word track. It's it's. You know, where you, you have to be. And the other thing, right, communication. What's the telephone number for Amazon? There's none. What's the telephone number for Good Google? Luck. There is none. You've got to work on all these solutions that the customer has available to him or her uh, online without the need to reach a person because we can't expect to have a 24-hour-a-day staff. But we need to have a 24-hour-a-day solution. Customers 
You know, one of the things I love about this conversation, and anytime I talk to you gentlemen, is the fact that I see you as like the advanced team, right? You're out over the horizon shouting back at us, literally, this is what's going on, this is where we have to be marching. So I know the people that are watching this are in all different stages of digital retailing and you know maybe they're in the middle of Montana and this isn't as important, but I am going to say pay attention because just because Brian and David are on the very, very front lines, it's, it's a blessing to the rest of us that now I at least have a marker out there that we can actually start to move toward. I don't know if anybody here is a gamer, I'm really not, my 13 year old son is. The game Fortnite, everybody plays it, they can drop a marker somewhere way far out in the distance and the smoke comes up and everybody that's played it knows this and then the rest of the squad that's going know we're moving toward that marker and then when you hit the ground is when the game's on. I, I have to tell you, I, I, you know, listening to Rhett before and he's just doing a great job and he's doing, Mr. Wright is doing an incredible job and there are a couple of other markers that we're following and don't they make it easier for us? You know, they, because I know we've been the tip of the spear in a couple of incidents, uh, incidents, and mm -hmm. the tip is where you, you take all the heat, man. That's where you get banged up, and, and we right. were invest a lot of money in doing this over the past two or three years, and really taking some hits, or not some hits, but taking some of what would have been net profit and investing into the future. And we're getting now we've got a great return on that learning. That's right. A great return on that investment. That last year we picked up and delivered for service. 24,000 cars. 24,000 when we went to the customer's house, picked up the car, serviced it overnight, and brought it back to them. And and so when and we never could have foreseen what was happening now. But it, it's crazy. Scott Galloway, Professor Galloway, has got a great saying. He says it's amazing how long things take, and shocking how fast they happen. And this journey has taken our industry so long to embrace. Right, and so on, and and the pushback came from the OEM, the pushback came from uh, the dealers, the pushback came from the managers, and it's amazing how long it's taken us to, to try and get in the game of online retail where the rest of the world is, and it's shocking how fast we had to get into that game. Without a doubt, the, uh, Scott Galloway is an expert at making that simple. Um, Peter, can you tee up the, the slide, the video? Um, you sent this through and we didn't really have a chance to show it, but I'm gonna show a video slide that you sent through, David, and this is kind of like a heat map of service appointments. So um, we're gonna roll that right now so people can this, get up. This is, uh, hey Paul, just, just to yes. tee this up, this is, service, this is service appointments pickup and delivery since COVID, Re this is recent. Great, and we're gonna make sure that's, we're gonna be on a delay, so um, I just wanna get confirmation that that's streaming. Okay, good. That's it. Brian, go ahead. If you want to speak to it, that's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, so, so you, you, you're going to see the yellow are new customers, the green are uh, customers returning uh, to the dealership, and this is since March 1st. And I asked uh, the team at RedCap to prepare this for us, because the visual, I know the numbers, I know how many people are doing it, but when you see the visuals and you see the reach, and this strategy is not a strategy to go after my brothers and sisters at other dealerships. I don't want Hillside Honda service customers. I don't want Plaza Honda service customers. What I want are the 80% of our customers that are defecting to the independents. I, why would yep. I go after their customers? If they're playing in the same game we are, the small 20%. Why not go after the 80% right. of customers that have left the dealerships because we're not convenient and we don't have good proximity? Pickup and delivery makes you convenient and gives you proximity because wherever they are, you can be to pick up the cars. The customer serves no benefit to the dealership by being in the store for service. The dealership serves no benefit to the customer by requiring that they come here. I don't need a customer at the store to complete an oil change, a brake job, or anything else. That's right. And so, you know, while many dealers with great intentions spend lots of money on amenities to make their dealership uh, comfortable for their customers, it's simply not addressing the core problem. The customers don't want to be here. And whether you have a putting green like J.M. Lexus does, uh, the nicest service department I've ever been in my life, uh, or, or, or Giants uh, a Cafe or, or, or a beauty parlor, uh, these are uh, these are Band-Aids, right? We're putting a Band-Aid on, on a problem. Let's address the Not problem. Not actually the there, issue. There is no, That's right. There is no reason for the customer to be at the dealership. They can accomplish everything they want right on the cell phone. They can book the service on the cell phone. They can book the service 
they can see the, we, we're providing actually a greater level of transparency for customers when they're at home than when they're in the dealership. Because if you need a brake, we say, hey, uh, uh, well, here are your brakes, uh, and here's the gauge. They should be here, but here's where they are. And here are new brakes. Would you like to buy them? And the customer can, the customers know what's in their best interest. They say, sure. That makes see, this sense. is something, this is something you've been saying even before this pandemic. Gentlemen, yeah. I could do this all day, but our next guest is teed up. I want to give you, each of you 30 seconds to address, if you could look eye to eye with to everyone in the industry, it's a lot of people, but what's the one thing you would say to them in this? Uh, David, why don't you go first and we'll close out with Brian. Well, one thing, I guess one thing I would say, guys, is is that your business will be disrupted to the business. To the, disruption happens as a result of us not answering the call to our clients, not listening to our clients. If you listen to your clients, you can manage disruption, you can push down disruption, you become the disruption right out there. So so, the, so you need to make sure that you're paying attention, you're listening to your clients, you're, you're understanding what they need right now. And, and that's number one. And number two, if anybody more than, ha I'm more than happy to help, I love this business, I love the car business, I love dealerships, I love helping, reach out to me and I'm more than happy to connect you with some resources to the five things that you really need to be doing right now for the next 90 days and beyond, as well as some resources having to do with PPP. Uh, and, we make and sure, we'll aspects. make sure we get those resources posted up in the follow-up email so everyone has access to them easily. Brian, what are you saying to everybody? You know, it's kind of, it's kind of funny hearing David say that. Now listen, David, uh, I feel like uh, 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 Michael Jordan and you're, you're Tim Grover. Uh, uh, I pay you <laughs> not to train me, I pay you not to train the other guys. No, well, <laughs> uh, they, they, well, the four they, things they, everybody should do. Right. We'll just I give them four things. The only person on on an, on an airplane tomorrow to come out to fix yeah. this. Yeah, you know, <laughs> David is, is is the guy I go to, you know, for for answers, high level answers. Um, I would say I'm going to take a page out of his book and, and what I think uh, the dealers need to address. If you want to win in the showroom, you have to win online. There's no other mm -hmm. way about it. And I, I think that there's a real opportunity for dealers to learn uh, the digital playbook, to go to the uh, dealer guidebook from Google, and to, to immerse yourself in that. You, you can't play in this game unless you know the rules. And Google's come out with guidebook one and guidebook two. And I think that guidebook is an incredible resource. I'm not selling anything. The guidebook's free. You can go online uh, and, and look at that playbook and then take each of the modules and then hold your agency, if you have an agency, accountable. I, I, when it came to digital, we moved direct to, to buying our own digital advertising and to say to our team, here's what you need to do. You need to make sure in each of the pillars that we have the right ads at the right time. And my God, our, our team's doing a, a great job. I can tell you this, in this market, with what's going on right now, the lead count is pretty substantial. So we're looking forward to bringing everybody back um, I think we've got to, in, in closing out, to not only uh, one would be, if you want to win in the show, you've got to win online. And number two, you've got to make the good choices when it comes to uh, selecting who you're going to have with you in the box hall as we fight through this. Uh, this is, there are no passengers on the boat. Everybody that's on the boat has got to be rowing. And if not, Very those, good. People, those people have to be on somebody else's boat. You can't stand there and hope for the tooth fairy to make this go away. You've got to dig in, you've got to work. I see people now on relaxed schedules, it's not acceptable. We, here's how it's gonna work. You're gonna work harder than ever before and you're gonna earn less. That's how we're gonna get through this. And unfortunately- Thank you so much for, your, for the candidature. I'm sorry to have to cut you off. Guys, we're gonna do this again. I'm gonna make sure all the Great resources are out there and we'll be touched. Thank you so much for being open-handed with your time in the industry. Um, you can go ahead and end your calls from your end, but thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you.